So after you post the G code onto the flash drive, you're gonna head over to the CNC, turn the CNC on, and boot up Mach 3. And it, like I said in the other video, the first thing you want to do is ref all home. That's uh, that button right there. You see all the axes are red. This is what happens when you first turn on the CNC. So you want to press that button. And then you'll see the axes home. So on our CNC, the Z goes first, and then the Y, and then the X axis. You guys are sound. So homing the device, make sure like all the axes, uh, uh, well first for the Y axes, and make sure the, the two motors are synced. You can hear them click at the same time. And also clicking on the limit switches just gives the, uh, lets the machine know where the machine's 000, zero, zero coordinates are. So now after the CNC is homed, uh, just make sure all the axes over here are green. And then you're gonna move it over and put your tool in. So the controls are, uh, the arrow keys here, those uh, correspond to the axes. So the left and the right arrow keys move the CNC uh, left and right on the, along the X axis. And then the up and down arrow keys move the CNC forward and backward relative to like where we're standing. And holding down shift while moving the arrow keys moves it at the jog speed, which is the quick speed. So just gonna move it over so that you can more easily access the collet. So these are the tools for changing the tool and the collet. So this right here is a, it's, these are the two wrenches. Uh, this one here is the eighth inch end mill we're using. It's a two flute. And this is the collet, which the end mill goes in. And then this is the collet nut, which secures the collet to the uh, spindle. So the first step is to put the collet inside the collet nut. Just like that, you wanna hear it click into place, and if you flip it upside down, you see it doesn't fall out. And then next, you're going to want to put the end mill in. You wanna make sure that the collet is only grabbing onto the, sh uh, the, the shank of the end mill and not any of the flutes. Then you just put it in and screw it on. Just make sure the end mill does not fall out. Then to tighten it, uh, you're going to want to use the the gray wrench uh, on the black part, the top part over here, like that. And then the for to hold on to the collet, you want to use the, uh, the black wrench, which has these sort of hooks on it, so, which means that the, this wrench only works one direction. So you just want to make sure that you're gripping onto it properly in the way that it will actually tighten it. spin one or the other and just want to get it pretty tight. So after you get the collet and the end mill in, you're going to want to secure it on the material. We've actually done this first. Uh, the order doesn't really matter. Uh, key thing is for aluminum, you're going to want to actually use the drill press or hand drill to drill these holes in and then secure it down. For something softer like this polycarp sheet over here, you can just use the sc screws and screw straight through it into the MDF board. And just want to make sure that it's nice and tight. After you have the material secured down and the end mill in the spindle, you're gonna wanna zero the machine. So you wanna move you know, relatively close using the uh, jog speed, which is once again holding down shift. And then to move down, move the Z axis down, you hold down function and the down arrow key and that moves the Z axis. And then uh, moving it up, you just press the function up arrow key. And once again, holding down shift will move it at the jog speed. Uh, once you get close to your zero point, which I've marked out with this Sharpie point, you're gonna wanna slow down and use the uh, regular jog, regular moving speed, which is uh, a lot slower, and it's this is moving with just the arrow keys and not holding down shift. So for the X and Y, you just get lined up um, on the X and Y axis, and then you over here, you uh, press the zero Y and the zero X button. And then for the Z axis, you just wanna get down so that the end mill just barely touches off on the surface and then you hit uh, zero Z, just like that. And so all your axes now are zero, zero, zero. And 
and that should match up with the toolpath as a zero, zero, zero. Also, the jog speed that we're using for the regular jog uh, is 30, or 5% actually. After you've zeroed it, you just want to move the z-axis up and just out of the way. Next, you're going to want to take your USB, which has a toolpath on it, and plug it into the computer. So our, we have a little USB hub down here that we plug it into. And then you're going to want to pull up the toolpath on the CNC. So to do that, you press the load G-code button right there. And then you're going to load the file, navigate to the USB disk. And the file we're running first is called one eighth inch end mill. One signifies it's the first and first toolpath to run, and the one eight is the end mill size. And then it will load. And just one one last step is to verify that the preview window for the toolpath uh, just looks correctish. You see how the toolpath it only cuts to the left and the top. Uh, based off of where the machine is, which is machines at zero right now. And just like how it lines up here, machines at zero and cutting to the, cutting that way and that way will have material. Before you start, there's one last thing you wanna check and it's that your feed rate override is right here, is at 100%. This means that it's 100% of the feed rate that is in the G code. And to start, you just wanna hit cycle start and turn on the spindle. So we're running this at 16,000 RPM. So you see that it will first, uh, the view will go up and then it will move to where it wants to cut. After the toolpath has finished, the machine will return home. Uh, you can also stop it before it reaches home by pressing the feed hold button right there. And after this, or hitting the space bar. Sp hitting the space bar on the keyboard also feed holds. And after that, uh, after the eighth inch end mill, uh, that toolpath is done. We're now going to put in the 316 end mill and run that part. So you're going to want to make sure to put in screws into the part and these will hold down the part when we cut the outline and cut just the part out of the sheet, otherwise the sheet has nothing, the part has nothing holding it down. Uh, once you do that, you're going to put in the tool. So the next tool we're using is a 316 end mill. This uses a quarter inch collet, which all the tools can be found in that box for us. Uh, and then you're going to want to re-zero the Z. Because the tool uh, has a different height to it, the Z will be off, but the X and the Y, make sure that you do not touch those, otherwise the part will be cut off. So to zero the Z, it's just like before, you just gonna move it, move it down right until that the tip of the part just t barely touches off on the surface. And it's good also to zero the Z right in the middle of the part if your um, sacrifice board isn't completely level because then it sort of averages out the Z's in a sense. So you can see right here, just barely touches off on the surface. And then, just like before, on the screen, Mach 3, hit uh, zero Z. And you'll see that Z becomes zero. And like I said before, do not touch X and Y. Now we're going to want to load our next toolpath. So close the one before and then hit load. And this one running is two 316 end mill. So again, that means this is the second toolpath to run and it uses the 316 end mill. And we're running this one at 19,000 RPM. So you just set this to 19,000. And you're gonna lift the Z up and there we go.
Once you're done with that, uh, I like to split it into the pockets. So we cut out the pockets and then do the outline. So that, that actually uh, helps uh, the part from chattering and keeps it more secure. So the next tool path we're running is uh, it's the 3 316 mm which is the last one. And since we're using the same exact tool, you don't need to re-zero it at all. You just uh, hit go. After the part is finished, you're going to want to, before you unscrew it, vacuum up all the glue and tips. This is this makes it easier to this makes the part cleaner uh, before you take it off and easier to clean.